All right, so we're in Acts, the first chapter, and the sixth verse. This is after my second side rose on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days. They asked him this question. Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore would come together, they asked of him, saying, Mashiach, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You see? So the kingdom come to Israel. To the Israelites. Point blank. Whether you accept it or not. Now I'm going back to Romans 9 and 4. That's what we precepted. Romans 9 and 4. Who are Israelites according to the flesh, not the spirit, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory. We deal with, we deal with the glory. Now we're going to deal with the covenants, which is a contract or agreement between two people. Or between the Most High and I'll say the children of Israel. Who is the covenants given? Let's go to first and foremost, Psalms 105. 8 to 10. After this, you ain't got to go no further, but we're going to go into it. Psalms 105, 8 to 10. We've proven that I cannot be a spiritual Chinese. I cannot be a spiritual Ch Japanese. I cannot be no spiritual uh, any other nation outside from the 12 tribes of Israel, which I am. I can't be a spiritual Israelite. Nobody could be a spiritual Israelite. You got to be an Israelite according to the flesh. So the covenant was given to who? Psalms 105 and 8. He have remembered his covenant, which is a contract or agreement forever. Forever, it says. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant, which contract or agreement he made with who? With Abraham. And his oath unto Isaac. Sound familiar? And confirm the same unto Jacob. I've been saying it all the time. <laughs> the most high the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Here it is. For a law. And to Israel, which represent the Israelites. For an everlasting covenant. Right? There it is. Because a lot of y'all be saying the 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 Y'all been grafted in the covenants with you now as other nations know. Make it mean something different. Jeremiah 31 31. Be done with the covenants. Jeremiah 31 31. Behold, the days come. That's the future. Said the Most High that I will make a new covenant, a new covenant, a new contract, or a new agreement with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The house of Israel represent the the northern tribes and the house of Judah represent the southern tribes. That's all 12 tribes of Israel right there. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That's in the wilderness, which my covenant they break, which, which the law of the was the most high we broke. Although I wasn't husband unto them, said the most high, dang. But this shall be the covenant or the contract of agreement, which is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days in the future, said the Most High, I will put my law in their inward parts. See, once you learn the moral laws, the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremonial laws, and you follow them, you're getting used to follow them year, year after year, or month after month, day after day, then you don't have to teach you. It's like, it's no different than if you know how to ride a bicycle, you know how to ride a bicycle every time you pick up a bike, you can ride it. You know how to swim, you know how to swim, right? You ain't nobody got to teach you how to swim over again. You know how to do these things. So once you learn the laws of the Most High, that's how you put it in our inward parts, you know? But we know in part and prophesy in part. We ain't got it all together. But we're working on rehearsing the righteous acts as best as we can in captivity. Put it like that. That's why he said, and check this out. It says, but this shall be the covenant, verse 33, that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Most High. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, in our minds, right? And will be their power and they shall be my people. Now, mind you, listen to what this next verse says, because a lot of y'all, they have asked me and I'm dealing with 
this verse here with them. Are we under the new covenant? This is what it says. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. So is there anything in this lesson that I'm taught you? Are you not being taught? If you're listening? Yeah. I'm being taught. If I'm listening to other Israelites, I'm listening to other, other uh, brothers breaking down the scriptures and so forth. Yeah. So uh, we, it said, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. So no, we're not under this yet. And every man his brother, saying, Know the Most High, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Most High Power, for I will forgive their iniquity. See? We waiting on this, but the Most High to forgive our wickedness. Remember the heathen know that we're in the captivity for our iniquity? They know this. So what you said, they're going to have you to be righteous? No, they're going to continue to have you deal with iniquity, wickedness. Breaking the Most High's laws while y'all talk about you ain't under the law of the Most High. The Most High said he's going to forgive our iniquity and I will remember their sin, which is the transgression of the Most High's laws, no more. See? Hallelujah. Now, Hebrews 8 and 8. Since we heard that, listen to what he said again. Hebrews 8 and 8. That's why I say when you look at the New Testament, there is no New Testament. They only had the law and the prophets to go by. But see, a lot of people don't understand. That's why you look at a man shake up a shot. You can't show me nowhere. Well, he read from the book of Hebrews. Or he read from the, he, they handed him the book of Hebrews or any, any writings of Paul. So this is why I say the simplicity of a man shake up a shot. You got to think. There is no New Testament. He only had the law and the prophets to go by. That's why I say don't think, they don't even think that I come to destroy the law and the prophets. That's what he had to go by. Period. So listen to what it says. Hebrews 8 and 8. Sound familiar? For finding fault with them, the Israelites, we the Israelites, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Most High, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Same thing we read in Jeremiah 31, 31 down. Not according to the covenant or the contract or agreement that I made with their five fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant or his agreement. We broke his laws. And I regarded them not by sending us into captivity over and over again that we caused upon ourselves because we didn't follow the Most High's laws, statute commandments, said the Most High. But this is the covenant, the contract agreement that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Most High. I will put my laws in their mind so that you know that the heart is the mind. Because it said heart. In Jeremiah 31, 31 down, right? Now I was letting you know the heart is the mind. That's why you look at, whenever you look at certain things that's from the Old Testament, you read in the New Testament, it's giving you understanding. I will put my law into their mind. That's why you got to study to show yourself approval to the Most High, studying His laws, His rules and regulations. So this could be in your mind. And you'll know what's right from wrong. And write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a power. And they shall be to me a people. And they shall not they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. Aren't we, don't we have to be taught? Don't you have to be taught? Yes. If you listen to my voice, you're being taught. Concerning, we can't be any no spiritual Israelites the topic straight up and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the most high for all shall know me <laughs> because he's gonna be all in all that's right from the least to the greatest that's right <laughs> for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more it's the same thing that we just read in that he said a new covenant, he had made the first old, now that which the calf and watch is old is ready to vanish away. Because he's going to set us up in righteousness. That's what it's saying, y'all. So, going back to Romans 9. So that's the uh, adoption, the glory, and the covenants. Verse 4. And the service of the Most High. The service of the Most High, which is the priesthood. Uh, let me see, am I right? No, no, excuse me, so like you. 
We're dealing with, and the giving of the law. The giving of the law. Who the most I give the law to? Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. Giving of the law. Who's the law giving to? Psalm 147, 19 and 20. He show of his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, which is the punishments for breaking the Most High's laws, they have not known them. These other nations have not known the judgments of the Most High. Praise ye the Most High, right? So, Look at uh, Psalm 78. So once we learn the laws, this commandment that the Most High gave to, <clears throat> to us, Psalm 78 and 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Right? So we're supposed to let the children know the laws of the Most High. That's our obligation as parents. That the generation to come might know them. That's why you got to go over these laws, y'all. That the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them to their children. So we teach our children so they could their children can teach their children that they might set their hope or their faith in the most high and not forget the works of the most high. Hear that? The most high wrote these laws with his finger. The works of the most high. Not forget the works of the most high. But keep his commandments. Can't get no clearer than that. But keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers. How were they our fathers? A stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that set not their heart, which is their minds are right. And whose spirit was not steadfast with the most high. They want to be like the other nations until this day. That's why I say all them joiners to them. These idols and so forth, these different religions, going to fall by the sword right with them. You better hear the word of the most high and with understanding. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4th chapter. Verse 5. Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Talking to we the Israelites, even as the Most High, my power, commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. This is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, as it is today. We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Hmm. For what nation is there so great? Talking about we the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, who have the most high so near unto them. As the most high, our power is in all things that we call upon him for. What nation, if thou was concerned? And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? What nation? Answer that question. Because he asked him the question. Then you know how Important we are. Only take heed to thyself. Take heed to yourself. And keep thy soul diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Forget what you've seen. 
and least they depart from thy heart, from your mind, the way you think, all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. See? Just like he's told us in Psalm 78 and 5. It ain't going to deviate. The same thing over and over again. Most I got to continue to speak to us. He said different passages in the Bible. Because the most I speak once. Yea, twice, a man perceives it now. So that's why a lot of times you hear the same thing being spoken. Like I'm saying, this, do the precept, you hear the same thing. Going back to Romans 9 and 4. Let's read verse 3. Because I keep saying the flesh, but I want to make sure you understand with a lot of y'all, you're not going to read it. So, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Mashiach. This Paul saying this. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Now, you talking about nobody else. You talking about no Gentiles. According to the flesh, who are Israelites. You got to be born an Israelite. From an Israelite father. To whom pertain to the adoption. We went over that. And the glory. We went over that. And the covenant. We just covered that. And the giving of the law. We just covered that. And the service of the Most High, which is the priesthood. When you look at uh, Numbers, the first chapter, go to Numbers, the first chapter. And verse 50, Numbers, the first chapter, verse 50. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. So the Levites were given the uh, position of bringing forth the laws to we, the twelve tribes of Israel. And when the tabernacle set it forth, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And the strangers that cometh nigh or near shall be put to death. See, only the Levites could deal with this. And anyone come near, it's going to be put to death, he said. And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp. And every man by his own standard throughout their hosts. Do not host mean armies. You know, all the tribes were together. But you was with your tribe. It says, but the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle. That's the service of the Most High. Of testimony. That there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. So the Levites had to be around the tabernacle. Also the Most High said, he's going to bring this wrath. Remember he said, no man can come near it. They can't come near it. But the Levites can't. And Levi shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. That's the service. Go to um, Hebrews 8 chapter. Hebrews 8 chapter. And... Look at uh, verse 1. See. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. This is a Mashiach Yavashat sitting on the right hand side of the Most High. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Most High pitched, and not man. That's why he said in uh, Hebrews 7, 14, For it is evident, it's a fact, that our power, Hamashiach Yavashai, sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Remember, the priesthood was under the Levites. And it is yet far more evident, far more of a fact, that for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testified, Thou art 
uh, priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, King David prophesied this in Psalms, the 110th chapter, verse 1 down. He said, The Most High said unto my power, Hamashiach Yahweh sit thee on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. That's why he said, The Majesty on high, which is on the right hand side of the Most High, right? So, who, he said, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so now, for there is a dis, a very, there, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof, meaning the, the, the law of sacrifice. For the law made nothing perfect. The law of sacrifice made nothing perfect. Cause we be ready to, to do a, a evil act, and knowing that we gotta have a goat, knowing we gotta have a turtle dove. Or a lamb, or whatever it is that will so-called take away our sin and doing this evil act. But also I see he with that. He wants to be obedient. But now we had whatever it takes to be able to sacrifice, knowing we're gonna do this evil, ready to do it. Just give it to the priest. Now nah, we cool. Nah. Like a lot of y'all, all you gotta do is just, just call the name of the Lord, you're gonna be saved. Excuse me, L O I D. That's B A L. That's what y'all calling on, B-A-A-L, when y'all call on L-O-R-D. I showed you. For the law of sacrifice made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. That's a much of size precious blood. By the which we draw nigh unto the most high, near unto the most high. That's why I go to Hebrews 10 and 1. He said, for the law having, this is a law of sacrifice, having a shadow of good things to come, which is a much of shot being the ultimate sacrifice, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, see? With those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered the law of sacrifice, sacrificing animals or whatever it was for your sins, goats and so forth, because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. That's why we have a day of atonement every year. But is it, if, listen to what it says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. I'm gonna read you again. But it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. But see, it tells you in uh, 1 Corinthians, one twenty-two, but the Jews require a sign. So most of always got to give us some kind of sign. Most of want us to be obedient, but we wasn't. We broke his laws. Wherefore, when he was much of shy coming into the world, he said, "Sacrifice and offering thou would have not, but a body. That's his body. His precious blood was shed. Hast thou prepared me? And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Man, that's why he made a much of shot. Come here." Hebrews 9 and 6. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always to the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of the Most High. See? That's who the service of the Most High was with. The priests. But now we got an ultimate priest, a high priest, a Mashiach Yahweh 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, we the Israelites, a royal priesthood. You hear that? And holy nation. Because a lot of y'all, y'all got a problem with being priests. Some kind of way. Y'all think it's something that you can demean. And we rehearsing. It says, look, and if you teach in the Bible, as an Israelite, you are a priest. Listen. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, it says. And holy nation, not no group. Stop saying we're a hate group. We're not a hate nation. A holy nation. We're not no group. We're not no organization. We're not no community. 
We are a nation. And when you begin to identify yourself as a nation, as the Most High is saying here, you ain't going to find nowhere in the Bible where the Most High said we're a community. Where the Most High say we're a, a group. Like they say. We are a community. We are a club. We this or whatever. You know. We are a nation. This is what it says. A holy nation. A peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness. That the Most High told Esau in Isaiah 47 and 5. To sit thee silent, shut up, and get thee in the darkness. Ignorance, not knowing. Like he said, in the end, in Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 7, they're going to say, as for the way of the Most High and of my Shekhar Shai, we have not known it. So therefore, you think they want you to know the way to your power? The Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? I don't think so. They want to keep you as dumb, stupid, and sadist, and silly, and, and ignorant as they can in darkness. That's their job. And they did a great job of it. But all praise to the Most High that we coming out of it. That's why we bring forth these precepts. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Hopefully Most High choose us to be so. And holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The only way you come out of darkness is the light is keeping up the Most High's commandment. Proverbs 6.23 come out of darkness that's why when you look at it, I did a whole lessons on spiritual darkness and so forth look it up you know so and when you look at uh, Revelations 5 and 10 look at that because a lot of this sort of people that have a problem with uh, even them naming me calling me priest I want I name myself that you know but look at what it says in the kingdom and remember, we rehearsed it, says Revelations 5 and 10. And have made us unto our power kings and priests. I guess you really have a problem with saying, Malak's our wow, huh? King's our wow. You like that, huh? <laughs> it said, and have made us unto our power, most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. You hear that? We're going to reign right here on the earth. We got next forever, though. Praise to the Most High. But he say, And have made us into our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So we rehearse in the Rogers Acts. Judges 5.11 says that. So now let's go back to Romans 9 and 4. Who are Israelites, according to the flesh, to whom pertains the adoption, covered that, and the glory, you covered that. And the covenants. And the giving of the law. And the service of the Most High. And the promises, right? So now, we got to deal with the promises. With the Most High promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The land of Canaan, which is the land of Israel. The land. Go to Jeremiah 3.18. Jeremiah 3.18. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. That's all 12 tribes, southern tribes and the northern tribes. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. You hear that? The Most High going to plant us in our own land. This is what he's going to do. Um, look at... Uh, Isaiah 60 and 21. Isaiah 60, 21. Thy people who are the 12 tribes of Israel also shall be all righteous. We're going to be keeping the laws of the Most High. They shall inherit the land forever. 
You know? We got next forever. Go here, inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting. This is the most high planting. He going to take us from wherever we are in the four corners of the earth as the Israelites. One third, mind you. He said, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands. You know? The work of the most high's hands. Why? That I may be glorified. All glory to the most high. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. A little one shall become a thousand. You know? A little one gonna become a thousand. So what do you think a large one gonna come become? Thousands. <laughs> and a small one, a strong nation. You know? I the most high will hasten it in his time. Most high time, he's gonna just what that's what he's gonna give us. Promises. Look, Acts 13 and 23. Savior, man. Acts 13 and 23. Wait a minute. Let's look at, uh, let's go back to Romans 9 and 5. Because we did the promises, now we got to deal with verse 5. Whose are the fathers, Romans 9 and 5, whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh. This is canceling out any kind of spiritual Israelite. But my shadow shadow came, who was over all, the most high blessed forever. And like I told you, I'm not dealing with that Egyptian idol. So, Acts 13 and 23. Acts 13, 23. Gave us a Savior. Acts 13 and 23. Of this man's seed, who was King David, when you read verse 22, and when he had removed him, removed Saul, our first king as the Israelites, he raised up unto them David. It's King David to be their king. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, after the Most High's own mind, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed, which is a compilation of sperm, lineage, hath the Most High according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior. A Mashiach Yahweh shot. You see? When John, who was John the Baptist, had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to everybody? No. The baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. We the Israelites. That's who John was preaching. Repentance and the baptism to all the people of Israel, the Israelites. And the Mashiach of Shai, a savior, most I promise us as the Israelites, a savior of Mashiach Shai. Acts 26 and 20, Acts 26 and 6. Acts 26 and 6. Acts 26 and 6. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of the Most High unto our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the twelve tribes of Israel, unto which promise are twelve tribes. Now, if you're not of the twelve tribes, this promise not to you, of which promise are twelve tribes. See? Instantly serving the Most High day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. See that? So, the promise are 12 tribes. So that's why I say the most high is the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And we became 12 nations that make up one nation, the Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew is our language, and Israelite is our nation. That's who the most size of power of. And as you see, the 
promise our 12 tribes. Can't get around that. Salvation, which is power from the authority. Luke, the first chapter, verse 68, 71. Just being saved, y'all. Luke 1, 68. Blessed be the most high power of Israel. Why did it say the most high power of every nation? If he is, it's in the New Testament, which y'all believe in, you religious people. He said, blessed be the most high power of Israel. For he have visited and redeemed his people. Not everybody. As you've seen in this lesson. And has raised up in horn, which is the power. It means power, it means power of salvation. Power from the authority for us, the 12 tribes of Israel, in the house of his servant David. Because the Mashiach of Shai came out of the lineage of David, as we just read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which had the spirit of a Mashiach, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved. Y'all talking about y'all saved. This is being saved. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. That's being saved. Now. Go to Acts the first chapter. And the fourth and fifth verse. And being assembled together with them, after this is after Mashiach was died, rose on the third day, and had walked the earth for 40 days, being assembled together with them, the Israelite men, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. See? Ye have heard of me. Said for John truly baptized with water. We just read it. Repentance to Israel. Baptize, 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 repentance, and said repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, right? For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence, which would be seven days from that. If you count, he died, rose on the third day, walked here for 40 days, that's 43 days. And seven days later would be the Feast of Pentecost. We just went over 50 days after the Passover, Feast of Living Bread, um, which came in Acts, the second chapter, the, the Holy Convocation of Pentecost. Right? That's why he's saying, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence, not many days from now. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Um, um, what did he say? Um, Okay, so from there, look at uh, St. John, St. John 14. <coughs> and verse, start at verse 15. Much of what I said, St. John 14 and 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Can't get no clearer than that, y'all. Y'all say y'all love him. I say y'all was shy who y'all call, ignorantly call Jesus Christ. That's not his name. <clears throat> but he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Right? The world can receive the Holy Spirit, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. 
but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. See? He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So, he's the spirit of the Most High. Let me show you right quick. I'm going to do it real quick. Ephesians 3 and 9. That's why I asked you uh, concerning Revelation 3.14. It's A-M-E-N. I'm not sure I was shy. Yes or no? Because it said a faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High, right? Is that Egyptian deity or idol, is that a Mashiach Yahweh Shai? Because it tells you here in Ephesians 3 and 9, it's a mystery that's been hidden in the Most High. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, that's a secret, which have been which from the beginning of the world, we're going to go back to Genesis 1 and 1 and 2, have been hid in the Most High, who created all things by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. See? Who created all things by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Now, y'all going to, somebody probably try to figure, well, how, how, how can he create everything by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai when Hamashiach Yahweh Shai just came in the flesh for the first time? So let's go back to Genesis 1 and 1. Because we, we that are Hebrews, like, no, this is saying in the beginning, Allah Hayim, the powers created the heaven and the earth. Now, I'm, I ask you to show me where the Most High created all things by the angels, plural. Because we just read the Most High created all things by Mashiach Kel Shai. Now, when we read verse 2, it says, and the earth was without form. So the earth ain't with any form and void. Nothing like it looks now. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Right? Darkness. Pure darkness. Listen. And the spirit, not spirits of the Most High, the spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters. And the Most High said, once I got a voice, and the Most High said, let there be light, and there was light. So this light came out of darkness. But the spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters. Everything comes from the waters, y'all. But the spirit of the Most High, don't say spirits of the Most High, but the spirit of the Most High, remember what it says in Psalms 104. <clears throat> and four. Psalms 104 and four. Who maketh his angels spirits. That's plural. Angels and spirits. So he maketh his angels spirits. So it could be angel, say angel. You can say spirit, you can say angels, plural, or spirits, plural. They're the same entity. That's why you're seeing the spirit that's one of the Most High. We already said in Ephesians 3 and 9, the Most High, this is a mystery that's been here in the Most High from the beginning, went to the beginning. Can't go no further than that. What was before the earth was out formed, if thou can say. Y'all talking about before the Bible was written, what was before the earth was even formed and void, if thou can say. You was on the earth. When there was no earth that was formed, it was void. No, I don't think so. But it said the spirit of the Most High moved on the waters, right? Singular. I ask you, show me where the Mashiach of Shai and the angels created everything. What scripture is that? Who make of his angels, plural, spirits. His minister is a flaming fire, and the fire is the word of the Most High. We read Jeremiah 23, 29. They bring the word of the Most High. The Most High got a voice. And once he brings forth his voice, the word of the Most High goes to the holy angels. This spirit of the Most High, we know for a fact. Well, you might not know or you should know now. Is the Mashiach Yahweh Shai as the angel of the Most High. Understand, understand this. That's why Hebrews 1. Go to Hebrews first chapter. Hebrews first chapter. This is concerning the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Uh, 
Let's look at verse 2. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son. This is the Most High's son. Mashiach Yahushua, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. There it is. The worlds. Many different worlds. Mashiach, by whom also Mashiach Yahushua, through the power of the Most High, made the worlds. Right? So now, uh, verse 4 says, being made so much better than the angels. As he have by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, this question is to everyone that say the angel came down, the sons of the Most High, who are the angels, came down and had sex with the women in Genesis 6 chapter. Y'all try to say the sons of the Most High are the angels. Answer this question. And nobody answer these questions I'm asking. Simple question. As the Most High said right here. Hebrews 1 and 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son? Hmm? Did y'all say the sons of the Most High came down to see the daughters of men, that they were fair, and created giants, when they say giants were already on the earth? Sons of the men are those of the seed of Seth's son, who was named Enos. That's when men began to call on Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahushai, or the Most High by Shema Mashiach Yahushai, or the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by Shema Mashiach Yahushai. Become the sons of the Most High. You see? You would say, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Which angel? Y'all reading the book of Enoch, you got all them angels' names. They did this, they did that. Name them. Listen to what it say. And again, when he bring up in the first begotten into the world, and it wasn't A-M-E-N as you just read in Revelation 3.14 if you following along. Was it? That's a Mashiach Yahweh Shai? You see how they put that Egyptian deity right there? And again, when he bring up in the first begotten, that's why you look at, hey, John 3.16, all of y'all know that, but most high so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And again, when he bring in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of the most high worship him. And of the angels, he said, that we just read in Psalms 104 and 4, who make of his angels spirits his, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the son, he said, that throne, that power and authority, oh power, you see that, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. But thou have, for thou lovest righteousness, which is keeping of the most high's laws, Deuteronomy 6.25, and hate of iniquity, hate of wickedness, hate of sins. Therefore, power, even thy power, have anointed thee above have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, above the angels. He said, let all the angels worship a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. You only begotten son of the Most High. So what angel? But the Most High say, that's my son, and I'm his father, if thou can say. I'm talking to you leaders that, that dropping that nonsense about angels came down here and had sex with women and created giants. Name them. The sons of the Most High. Let me just go there so those that don't know will know because this is what I'm asking. Give understanding on Genesis 6 chapter. Genesis the 6 chapter. This is where they're getting this from. This is the sixth chapter. It said, and, and it came to pass when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born of them, so daughters being born to men, that the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of men that they were fair. So they say the sons of the Most High here are the angels, fallen angels that came down here. That they were fair, and they took them wise of all which they chose. And the Most High said, My spirit shall not always 